Hello everyone, I'm Murat Rukabhomik and I welcome you all to another episode of Quotes Today on Live Law where we update you about all the important legal developments that took place across the country today. We will begin with developments from the Supreme Court and then cover High Courts and other subordinate courts. If you like our content, please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let's begin. In a significant development, the Supreme Court today granted bail to Kerala journalist Siddiqui Kapan in the case filed against him by the Uttar Pradesh Police under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, that is the UAPA. Kapan, who has now spent almost two years behind bars, was arrested along with three others in Uttar Pradesh in October 2020 while they were on their way to Hathras to report the gang rape and murder of a 19-year-old Dalit girl. A bench comprising Chief Justice of India, UU Lalit, and Justice S. Ravinder Bhatt, while granting bail to Kapan, asked him to be in Delhi for the next six weeks. He has also been permitted to go back to his hometown in Kerala after that, subject to certain conditions. Pertinently today, during the hearing, the bench underscored that every person in the country has the right to freedom of expression and that Kapan was only trying to show that the victim needs justice. We have made a detailed video on today's hearing, the link to which has been given in the description box below. Do check it out. Perturbed that a routine practice followed by advocates to seek adjournment has tarnished the reputation of the Supreme Court, today's Supreme Court Judge Justice D.Y. Chandrachur reckoned that the institution aims to change its image as a Tariq pe Tariq court. Interestingly, today during one of the hearings, he said, we want to change the image of the Supreme Court as the Tariq pe Tariq Court. Today, as an advocate apprised the bench comprising Justices D.Y. Chandrachur and Hima Kohli that he has circulated a letter seeking adjournment, Justice Chandrachur vehemently refused to stand over the matter to some other day. He instead asked the counsel to argue then and there or take a Passover, prepare and then argue the matter. The Supreme Court of India today issued notice in the petition filed by TMC MP Mohua Moitro and another challenging the premature release of 11 convicts on remission by the Gujarat government in the Bilkiswano case for gang rape and murder. A bench of justices Ajay Rastogi and B.V. Nagaratna issued notice to Malhotra in the matter and also asked him to take instructions if he could appear for the other convicts as well. The court also directed the petitioners to serve a copy both to him as well as the state of Gujarat. The bench also directed the state government to place all relevant documents on record including the remission order. The Supreme Court bench comprising Chief Justice of India, UU Lalit, Justices Ravinder Bhatt and P.S. Narasimha has listed a batch of petitions challenging the constitutional validity of the provisions of the Place of Worship Special Provisions Act of 1991 for October 11th. The court has also directed the Union of India to file a response in two weeks. The petitions have been filed against the Act in as much as it bars remedies against illegal encroachment on the places of worship and pilgrimages prior to August 15, 1947. The court today was hearing petitions filed by former BJP Delhi spokesperson Ashwini Upadhyay, BJP Rajya Sabha MP Dr. Subramaniam Swami and some others challenging the Places of Worship Act of 1991. The Supreme Court today orally remarked that a solution needs to be found for the stray dog menace and suggested that people who feed street dogs could be made responsible for vaccinating them and also bearing the costs if somebody is attacked by the animal. A bench comprising Justices Sanjeev Khanna and J.K. Maheshwari was hearing a batch of petitions in relation to the stray dog menace in Kerala, observing that a balance has to be found between the safety of people and compassion for animals, the bench posted the matter for hearing on September 28th, also to pass interim relief on September 28th. The Supreme Court today stated the demolition of Goa's iconic Curly's Beach Restaurant's buildings in one particular survey number, subject to the condition that they will not undertake commercial operations to the next date of hearing. The court made it clear that if there are unauthorized constructions on land other than the specified survey number, they can certainly be demolished. The owners of the restaurant had approached the Supreme Court challenging the demolition action taken by the Goa Coastal Zone Management Authority 
over violations of the CRZ regulations. BJP leader Sonali Fogart was recently found dead in the restaurant on August 23rd after being allegedly drugged. The Goa police has arrested Edwin Nunes, the owner of the restaurant, after methamphetamine allegedly given to Fogart was found in the bathroom of the shack. The Supreme Court bench comprising Justice Anirudha Bose and Justice Vikram Nath today issued notice on the plea file challenging the judgment of the High Court of Madras striking down the ban on online games such as rummy and poker. The petition filed by the state of Tamil Nadu assails the judgment passed by the High Court of Madras on 3rd of August 2021 by which the High Court had struck down the Tamil Nadu Gaming and Police Laws Amendment Act of 2021. The act had imposed a ban on games like rummy and poker played on the internet with real stakes. The Supreme Court of India today issued notice to the Union government seeking a response from the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology regarding the protocol for internet shutdowns. The court issued notice on a petition filed by Software Freedom Law Center challenging arbitrary internet shutdowns in the country. The petitioner had cited internet shutdowns in states of Rajasthan and Assam which were imposed to prevent cheating in public examinations. Although the centre was not a party to the petition, the bench said that it will issue notice to the centre along with the petition to ascertain the protocol and the compliance with respect to the same. This particular matter was heard by a bench comprising Chief Justice of India, Yuyu Lalit, Justice Ravinder Bhatt and Justice P.S. Narasimha. In a significant judgment, the Madras High Court today directed the National Medical Commission, that is the NMC, to revisit the official memorandum which directed that fees in 50% seats in private medical colleges and universities should be at the rate of government seats. The court said that the structure should be amended in such a way that merit is not affected. The NMC has been asked to reconsider the official memorandum and if necessary issue a fresh memorandum. Till such exercise is completed, the present fee structure prescribed shall continue. The court also upheld the validity of Section 10 of the National Medical Commission Act. The bench of Chief Justice Munishwar Nath Bhandari and Justice N. Mala passed these orders on a plea filed by private medical colleges challenging the directions of the National Medical Commission fixing fees equivalent to that charged by the government in 50% of the seats in private institutes. In a landmark decision, the Orissa High Court has ruled that the legal heirs of a complainant where a criminal case is instituted upon complaint can substitute him upon his death and pursue the case on his or her behalf. Justice Shatikanta Mishra observed in the order and I quote, it is impliedly acknowledged that the victim of a crime may die but the crime committed against him does not, nor does the guilt of the offender get washed away only because the victim is no more. On the contrary, the offender would still remain liable to be prosecuted for his deeds and punished if found guilty. The Karnataka High Court today allowed a petition filed by a minor boy and set aside the investigation initiated against him under various sections of the Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act for allegedly sexually assaulting a minor girl following a mutual settlement having arrived at between the parties. Justice M. Nagar Prasanna allowed the petition and while pronouncing its order said in open court, and I quote, Petition in is allowed, proceedings against the petitioner stands terminated. The petitioner and the complainant's daughters are minor even till date and were in a relationship which resulted in the present crime being registered. We have made a detailed video on this particular order, the link to which has been given in the description box below. Please do check it out. The Gujarat High Court has dismissed a public interest litigation petition filed by Tushar Gandhi, the great-grandson of Mahatma Gandhi, challenging the Gujarat government's decision to revamp the Sabarmati Ashram in Ahmedabad at an estimated cost of 1,200 crores. The bench of Chief Justice Aravind Kumar and Justice Ashuto Shastri observed that the proposed project would promote the ideas and philosophy of Mahatma Gandhi and it would be beneficial for mankind at large and that the revamped Gandhi Ashram would be a place for learning for all mankind of all age groups.
the Delhi High Court today resolved order in the appeal filed by student activist Umar Khalid challenging the trial court's order refusing him bail in a case involving UAPA charges alleging a larger conspiracy in the riots of 2020. Umar Khalid was denied bail by a city court on March 24th. He was arrested on 13th November 2020 and has been in custody since. Senior advocate Tridi Pais, appearing for Umar Khalid, made rejoinder submissions before a special bench comprising Justice Siddharth Mridul and Justice Rajneesh Bhatnagar and argued that there is nothing with the prosecution to show that there was a meeting of minds or some kind of physical manifestation of agreement with Umar Khalid to commit the crime. Thank you. Keep watching quotes today on Live Law for more such updates.